All right. Once again, this is Paul Glumez, uh, your senior Seattle LaRouche guy. Um, and uh, we have now a situation emerging on a global scale of the breakdown of the financial system on a much bigger scale than occurred in 2008. And what you have is a process of acceleration of the rate of acceleration of the disintegration of the financial structures centered in the Wall Street London situation. Uh, this criminal system uh, is at this moment going into a profound crisis. And at any moment now, if something is not done to intervene, to wipe out the, the worthless financial assets of the system and to protect the part of the banking system, which is the functional part, where there are real assets and real transactions and real goods and services being provided, you're looking at a mass kill you're looking at a mass disintegration of society in the very near future. Now the problem is that we have a, a uh, we don't have Franklin Delano Roosevelt in the White House who could deal with this. We have a psychotic malignant narcissist who is currently president, who is a total creature of the British crowd, who are actually committed to a mass kill policy. And they intend to use the systemic collapse of the transatlantic financial system, that's the city of London and Wall Street, to effect a mass kill of the, of the world population. Now, uh, for them, however, the emergence of Russia and China and India and the BRICS nations around a non-speculative financial system uh, is a strategic threat. Because if they unleash if they allow or unleash the collapse as, as it was intended, then they have no guarantee that those nations, along with forces in the United States, would not move to use the powers of the federal executive in, uh, and other nations uh, similarly, use the power of their federal executive to reorganize and uh, wipe out the worthless financial instruments and maintain the functions of the banking system that is needed for the for the functions of society for the functions of the economy that can be done and the first step towards doing that is of course is glass steagall the implementation of glass steagall so the movement the larouche movement has spent the last seven years organize the last eight years actually organizing for the passage uh return to glass steagall organizing in preparation for this crisis which is now unfolding as we speak now Obama as president guarantees that no positive action will be taken to deal with the systemic breakdown of the financial crisis. In fact, he will block any positive action to be taken to deal with the financial crisis. Because any positive action that will be uh, done to deal with the financial crisis ends the power behind Obama. It ends Wall Street. It ends the city of London. It ends the power of the European oligarchs. It ends the power of the British monarchy. So this is uh, the, the situation. And at this moment of crisis, the dog and pony shows, the little games, all the, the games have to go. And the best people in both parties have to come together around implementing this policy, starting with Glass-Steagall. If they do not do so. If they do not move now to do so, then there will be a total disintegration of society under Obama, under the financial crisis. It is precisely in this sense that the discussion is now going on, although it's not in the public, it's partly in the public, but it's not really in the public, of what do you do with Obama, who is not competent, who is not mentally capable of dealing with the crisis. And what you do with Obama is, is, is um, in the 25th Amendment uh, of the United States. What you do with Obama is 
the cabinet has to remove obama the vice president the secretary of state the other cabinet members have to to send a letter to the speaker of the house saying that we have removed obama for incompetence he is not capable of functioning he's not capable of carrying out the duties for which he was elected and at that moment the vice president current vice president becomes acting president of the united states that's the twenty fifth amendment that's the constitution of the united states as was modified in the sixty's following the kennedy assassination and in that moment has to come pretty soon that's how serious the situation is and that moment could very well come very soon and the vast majority of the u.s. population has no idea one that they're about to reach a situation where all their pension funds all their bank accounts everything is frozen they're about to reach a situation they would not have ever dreamed and also they we have reached a situation where the application of the twenty fifth amendment to remove obama which is absolutely necessary is also has to be done at this point so we're going into the early part of january and we have a crisis of incredible magnitude now let's go into the the crisis a little bit in terms of the financial uh... system okay. what you have is first of all a financial mountain of speculation much of the speculation is in the form of derivatives these derivatives are then attached to various uh, speculative bubbles the revival of the housing bubble the student uh... the the oil bubble the, the tar sands bubble the, the shale oil bubble so you have a number of different bubbles you have then you have the junk bond bubble now junk bonds are are debt instruments which have high risk and because they have high risk they have high yield now the trick is that the junk bonds are uh... may have as high as fourteen percent interest they may have as high as twenty percent interest they may have and that's where the real profit is made the profit is made on risky bonds but of course if the whole thing goes the bailout is, is there so we're at a point now where the junk bond uh, system of junk bonds which is where the real action is is now in deep trouble we're at a point now where the drop of oil price is um, is causing a collapse of all of the debt involved in the Saskatchewan, Alberta, North Dakota, boondoggle of, uh, you know, of, of we're going to make it on an oil boom. Now, the whole idea behind the oil boom, because the price of oil was high, was that this is how we're going to save the, the economy. We're going to ma- mass produce oil. And then we're gonna we're gonna be able to um, have energy independence, right? But who's gonna consume all this oil if the if there's no expansion of the physical economy? Where's all this oil gonna be consumed? So the very act of trying to have an oil boom in a gl- global economic situation, in which the United States, North America, and Europe's economies are 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 not growing, but they're actually shrinking. Because there's no investment, except in financial, real estate, and other bubbles. Then, who's going to consume all this oil? Gee whiz. So you have a massive increase of oil. You have a massive increase of oil. And then the Russians, you know, they've been depending on oil. So they have essentially uh, been making their uh, extra on oil. And they realize that with the sanctions that they can't do that anymore. So they're, make, they're shifting their entire economy to developing internal industries. So they're, they're okay relatively because they don't have a, a Federal Reserve. They don't have a London, go, a London, um, um, a London uh, uh, Wall Street system. So, so they're essentially uh, reorganizing their economy to create uh, diversity and, 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 and infrastructure and development. And they're being supported by China. China's doing the same thing. 
they're not under the control of wall street or the city of london and and they're not tied up in all these of boondoggles and financial speculation what have you so now you have essentially the the drop of oil prices is one trigger there's many other triggers this thing is overripe so are they going to bail it out can they bail it out is it possible to bail out this whole system well how are you going to do that? You already did a huge bailout. You already, and you're, you've been bailing out every month. The Federal Reserve has been buying up toxic assets, quantitative easing every month. And they finally raised the interest rates a little bit to try to dry out some of this, some of this speculative activity. But it's not going to. It's, but still, how are they going to deal with this? Are they going to do another super bailout? Well, what most citizens do not know, what most Americans do not know, is that. The Dodd-Frank bill, which was passed back in, um, I think it's 2010, uh, has provisions where systemically significant banking institutions, uh, when faced with bankruptcy, such that such bankruptcy will collapse the whole system, there is a legal process within the Dodd-Frank bill where an orderly liquidation authority under the Federal uh, Deposit Insurance Co Corporation can carry out a process whereby people's deposits can be confiscated. It's called the bail-in. This is what is happening in Italy right now. This is what is happening in, happened in Cyprus. So you have, without even reading the bill, most congressmen voted for a bill that essentially redefines deposits into a bank as uh, assets of the bank as investment in the bank. Your deposits are not an investment. That's the whole difference between as a investment house and a commercial bank. A commercial bank is not, the deposits do not belong to the commercial bank. They are not investments in the bank. They are not investments. They are deposits that the bank lends money to very specific things under regulations, and formerly regulations, under Glass-Steagall regulations. They are not to be used for speculation. You're not supposed to risk the deposits on, in the gambling casino. This was all changed under Alan Greenspan and beyond. So now everybody's deposits are now in the risk gambling system. And what's going to prevent the whole collapse of your deposit base in a financial collapse? Nothing. Except that they made it legal now, under Dodd-Frank, to confiscate your deposits as, as part of keeping the bank open, keeping the bank uh, function. As soon as that happened, it's all over. As soon as people's, like what's going on in Italy right now, with the four banks that went under. As soon as that starts happening here, it's all over. You're going to have to have a return to a regulated banking system. You're going to have to wipe out all the worthless paper. And you have to do that through the implementation of Glass-Steagall. And you're going to have to have the executive branch of the U.S. government function to carry this through. And who do you have in the White House? You have... Obama, a killer, who has been put in there essentially to be there at this moment when this system comes down to either launch a war that would lead to nuclear war with Russia or preside over the financial collapse and a mass kill of the world population affected in the collapse of the uh, transactional financial structure with nothing being put in charge, put in place. This is the policy coming from the British monarchy and the people behind the Saudi, uh, behind the terrorism which has been running rampant right now. This is their policy, a mass kill policy to bring the world into a population density of about a billion to two billion people. That's their mass kill policy. Their mass kill policy is using climate, um, the climate hoax, 
to prevent development and prevent the uh, and and force try to force the reduction of emissions, which won't happen, by the way. Countries will not cut back their emissions. What happened in in COVID, or what happened in Paris was not an agreement, a binding agreement. It was never really meant to be a binding agreement. But it sets up the atmospherics now for lawsuits in countries like Canada, Great Britain, Australia, and under Obama in the United States to launch lawsuits against companies, corporations, to confiscate their assets, their bank accounts, and uh, confiscate the uh, pension holders under the guise of, uh, 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 of indemnity in the lawsuits against their so-called polluting. And this is how, this is another scam. This is another scam being run on a global scale. But the ultimate consequence of this is a mass kill of humanity. And that mass kill of humanity, whether it's in that form or in a nuclear war that's launched because Russia, China, and other nations are resisting the mass kill, that is what you're up against. That's how serious it is. And the population is sleepwalking right now into Armageddon, not, not, a, not from a, a biblical standpoint or a religious standpoint, but into an actually planned mass kill. And Obama is there to preside over that process of a mass kill of humanity and inclusively the U.S. population. So this brings us back to the situation that we're in right now. The situation that we're in right now is that we must have the 25th Amendment applied very soon to remove this mass kill oriented individual who, 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 who is currently standing in the way of the very existence and very survival of the United States. Uh, what you have now is a situation in which the Russians have threatened Turkey. The, Tur the Turks downed the airplane, uh, the, the Russian Su-4-24 bomber. Uh, it is well known that this was done with uh, the United States foreknowledge, with the backing of Obama. And then the Turks uh, moved their troops into northern Iraq. What is going on here, or what has been going on, with Obama presenting one perspective and other forces in the United States presenting another perspective, is Russia is moving to save and defend the Syrian government, the Syrian army, which is the linchpin of any defeat of ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and what have you. ISIS, Al-Qaeda, etc., and these religious and... Uh, these wars are causing massive refugees and totally disrupting Europe. And they're creating the basis for fascism in Europe in response to the refugees as nations try to deal with the crisis of a wave of refugees who are essentially presented as a threat to the, to the population. And out of that comes the kind of fascism that you're seeing with Donald Trump, you know, building the wall and all of that. The same kind of thing is, is, face, is being faced by the collapse in, 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 in the Caribbean, in, in Mexico, in Central America, and so forth. Now, uh, the drug lords, the drug lords especially, in, in places like El Salvador and, and Mexico. Now, so this is, this is one aspect of it. So Russia has moved to stop all of this and has had a very effective... Uh, aerial support for the Syrian army, and they're starting to break down ISIS. Now, in this situation, Obama is saying, was saying, he still is saying, that uh, Assad must go before any uh, work uh, collaboration between the U.S. and Russia in stopping ISIS. Kerry just said no in, in Moscow, that, that there needs to be... Um, there doesn't have to be such an understanding before the U.S. to collaborate with, with uh, Russia. So which one is it? Obama has one policy. Kerry saying another policy. Is there a split in the, US, in the United States? Well, you better believe there's a split. And this is the split 
whether it's in the question of whether the United States is going to escalate a proxy war against Russia under the guise of fighting terrorism, or whether the United States is going to cooperate with Russia in the fight towards. Uh, uh, now, there's another aspect to this. And this is something that Putin just did today in, uh, in, in Moscow. The core of ISIS and Al-Qaeda in Syria and in Iraq is the drug trade. This is the army protecting the drug trade coming out of Afghanistan, the heroin trade. This is the banks. The funds from the drug trade internationally are the core of this international banking system. It's the core part of, uh, of the funds required to maintain the leverage, required to maintain the expansion of speculation on which the whole system depends. You start to interfere with the drug traffic, you're, you're essentially threatening, you're collapsing the whole banking, the whole uh, transatlantic banking system of London and Wall Street. So that's the kind of situation you're dealing with in this situation. So, so right now the Russians are publicly saying that it's the drug trade which is at the center of ISIS, but it's also the center of the international banking system. So this thing is coming to a head. Will Obama be removed under the 25th Amendment? And the U.S. work with Russia to, deal, to start to clean this mess up? deal with Saudi Arabia, deal with Turkey, which are supporters of ISIS and what have you, and end this crap, or, and, will the United States, in so doing, also deal internally with the financial collapse? This is the question. How many Americans have any idea that this is the question? That's the issue. So in this situation, where you have Glass-Steagall, you have a new credit being created to fund, put, put people back to work the way FDR did, and collaborating with Russia to deal with, these, with this international strategic problem of terrorism. You have the end of the empire. You have the end of the power that's been running this world to hell. Um, and you have a new system emerging. And it's that new system which gives humanity hope for a future. People, a lot of people wondered about this uh, Paris Climate Conference, which brought, everybody was there. It was a huge extravaganza. And uh, Obama said it was the biggest extravaganza uh, in all world history. But what was, what did they come up with? They came up with nothing. A voluntary carbon uh, reduction plan. What is that? But the hidden part of it is this <coughs> sets the atmosphere for lawsuits against companies that so-called are involved in building for other nations, for nations or trading in goods that actually pollute, like power plants. Coal fire plants, oil fire plants. And what happened is that all the, while all this is going on, out of Oxford University, the Bank of England funded a project at Oxford, uh, at an Oxford offshoot of Oxford University, uh, to d create the legal fiction known as Climate Earth, which means that you can have on behalf of client earth in various jurisdictions, you can have companies sued. You can have corporations sued. You can have confiscation under court order of assets. Now, this concept was presented by Prince Charles just before the Paris conference at the Commonwealth meeting in Malta. Now, what he presented was this idea of sustainable responsibility and of a, of a judicial structure, which is now going to be put into effect in uh, Canada, United Kingdom, and Australia. But with Obama on board, it's also being going to be set up in the U.S. It's also in part going on in the U.S. around the lawsuit, uh, around the lawsuit 
uh, in New York against, uh, against Exxon. So essentially, based on the p uh, pollution, you're going to have these lawsuits, which then are going to interfere with the ability of, 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 of nations to involve uh, companies for uh, developing their infrastructure, developing uh, their energy capabilities. And these, then these, uh, these things can then extend to even companies that are not in Wall Street or, or the city of London. Chinese companies, Russian companies. So you have a, Indian companies. You have a global system of, of legal financial warfare. Similar to what happened with Argentina. Argentina said they couldn't pay the debt. And they have to write down the debt. They couldn't function. They faced the total dis destruction of their society. And in order to have a, a nation, they had to write down the debt. What is more sovereign, the nation or the debt? The international bankers said, no, the debt's not sovereign. However, the vast majority of the creditors, over 80% of the creditors, agreed to the terms of the write-down and have been, been paid on the basis of that agreement. A small part of this debtor group did not said no, we're not going into an agreement on this. And then what are called vulture funds bought up the uh, portion of that debt, and then they've been going into court suing to, to have the ability to seize airlines or seize bank accounts or what have you. And the U.S. courts have given these vulture funds the right to, to seize the assets of Argentina at the rate, at a full at the full face value of the debt, when they only paid a few cents on a dollar off for that debt. And these vulture funds are the kind of disruptor that has been going around disrupting the whole process, whereby nations are now under financial attack through the court structures in the United States and Europe and so forth and so on, poorer nations. This same principle is now going to be applied to the climate issue. In other words, this is, this is warfare. This is legal financial warfare directed by an empire against humanity to prevent humanity from having economic development. And it's the resistance to this coming from Russia, coming from China, and coming from India and other nations, which is setting up the conditions for a global war. And either... This empire gets crushed or we're going to have a mass kill of humanity. It gets crushed and we have the policies that we should have had all along. If Kennedy had lived, if FDR had lived, we would have had these policies all along. So this is where we're at. Thank you. Uh, we don't have Franklin Delano Roosevelt in the White House who could deal with this. We have a psychotic, malignant narcissist who is currently president, who is a total creature of the British crowd, who are actually committed to a mass kill policy. And they intend to use the systemic collapse of the transatlantic financial system, that's the city of London and Wall Street, to effect a mass kill of the, of the world population. Now, uh, for them, however, the emergence of Russia and China and India and the BRICS nations around a non-speculative financial system uh, is a strategic threat because uh, this criminal system uh, is, at this moment, going into a profound crisis. And at any moment now, if something is not done to intervene, to wipe out the, the worthless financial assets of the system and to protect the part of the banking system, which is the functional part, where there are real assets and real transactions and real goods and services being provided, you're looking at a mass kill. You're looking at a mass disintegration of society in the very near future. Now, the problem is that we have a, a seven years 
organize, the last eight years actually, organizing for the passage uh, return to Glass Steagall, organizing in preparation for this crisis, which is now unfolding as we speak. Now, Obama as president guarantees that no positive action will be taken to deal with the systemic breakdown of the financial crisis. In fact, he will block any positive action to be taken to deal with the financial crisis. Because any positive action that will be uh, done to deal with the financial crisis ends the power behind Obama. It ends Wall Street. It ends the city of London. It ends the power of the European oligarchs. It ends the power of the British monarchy. So this is... Uh, Go ahead. All right. Once again, this is Paul Glumas, uh, your senior Seattle LaRouche guy. Um, and uh, we have now a situation emerging on a global scale of the breakdown of the financial system on a much bigger scale than occurred in 2008. And what you have is a process of acceleration, of the rate of acceleration, of the disintegration of the financial structures centered in the Wall Street, London situation. Because if they unleash, if they allow or unleash the collapse as, as it was intended, then they have no guarantee that those nations, along with forces in the United States, would not move to use the powers of the federal executive in, uh, and other nations uh, similarly, use the power of their federal executive to reorganize and uh, wipe out the worthless financial instruments and maintain the functions of the f banking system that is needed for the, for the functions of society, for the functions of the economy. That can be done, and the first step towards doing that is, of course, is Glass-Steagall, the implementation of Glass-Steagall. So the movement, the LaRouche movement, has spent the last...